everyone, I'd like to explain why this formula works for ellipses. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. There's no plus sign here like the, for the Pythagorean theorem. We are using the Pythagorean theorem, but in a different way. Now, what's the cast of characters again? Who are A, B, and C? So here's a horizontal ellipse, for example. A, the semi-major axis, is the distance between the center and either vertex. B, the semi-minor axis, is the distance between the center and either endpoint of the minor axis. C is the distance between the center and either focus. Again, what's the relationship between A, B, and C? C squared equals A squared minus B squared. That's how we can find C eventually. A and B we can get pretty directly from the standard form for the equation of an ellipse, whether it's centered at the origin or translated. But how do we find C? We find it through this formula. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Now, what are some principles that will help explain why this is true? Okay. Remember how we can construct an ellipse. Uh, we can tie down the end, the end points of a string at the two foci of the ellipse, draw the string taut by a marker, and then rotate the marker, keeping that string taut, and create our ellipse. A key question is, how long is that string? Well, remember, one of the properties of an ellipse is that, if you, let's say you take point P1, and you take the sum of the distances between this point and the two foci, d sub 1 plus d sub 2. It's a property of an ellipse that the sum of those distances Equals the, equals the sum of the distances d3 and d4 for this point p sub 2. p sub 2 is another point on the ellipse. The sum of distances between this point and the two foci will be the same as the sum of these two distances. d sub 1 plus d sub 2 equals d sub 3 plus d sub 4. The sum of distances stay the same. The sum of distances stays the same, corresponding to the fact that the string does not change in its total length. The sum of these distances does not change. It remains constant. But what is that constant? How long is this string? So why is this true? Why the, this formula? Well, let's say that we put our marker over here at, the, at this west point for the ellipse. Now, remember, the total length of the string is equal to the sum of the distances between this point where the marker is and the two foci. So the total length of the string is given by the length of this red line segment and the length of this green line segment. The distance from this point to this focus plus the distance from this point to this focus. But what is that total length? Well, by symmetry, I can move this over here And we find that the total length of the string by symmetry is given by the major axis, 2a. The length of the string is 2a. So the length of the string, the total length of the string is given by the major axis. All right. Now, let's say that we move our marker from here to here at sort of the North Pole of this ellipse. Here's our marker now. The distance from this point to this focus is the length of this red line segment. The distance from this point to this focus is given by the length of this green line segment. By symmetry, these distances, these lengths are equal. Now remember, the total length of the string 
the length of the red line segment plus the length of the green line segment is 2a, which means that we, we have a length of a for the red piece of string, and we have a length of a for the green piece of string over here. The 2a is split evenly like so. The center of the ellipse is here. All right. And let's consider these other sides. So let's connect the two foci here. And let's bring in this semi-minor axis. All right, now let's label, uh, let's say the triangle here with the red hypotenuse. Remember B here is the semi-minor axis. That's the distance from the center to this north pole over here. C, remember, is the distance between the center and this focus. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, what do we have? According to the Pythagorean theorem, we have, huh, we have the following relationship. We have B squared plus C squared equals A squared. B squared plus C squared equals A squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is the basis for this formula, but it looks a bit different. Solve for c squared now. Solve for c squared, okay? In order to do that, we subtract b squared from both sides, and lo and behold, b squared minus b squared, that's zero. They knock each other out. We have c squared, equals, look at this, a squared minus b squared. c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Here's a nicer form of the formula. c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So it does come from the Pythagorean theorem, but there's a minus sign, not a plus sign. Okay, it helps indicate the fact that c is less than a. C squared is A squared, but you take away B squared. C is less than A. The distance between the center and either focus is shorter than the distance between the center and either vertex. C here is less than A, which is this over here. So that's why this formula works. Pretty cool.